a few different times just to kind of get it a real deep color. And then kind of go in here at the bottom. One earthquake has hit California just one day after another earthquake, which is now being described as a foreshock and dozens of aftershocks. The latest earthquake reportedly originated in the same desert area of California between Los Angeles and Las Vegas and could be felt as far away as, as Las Vegas. It was just yesterday that a rolling 6.4 magnitude earthquake hit, which was the most powerful quake in that region in two decades. You can see chandeliers swaying. This is in Los Angeles. The epicenter was in a place called Ridgecrest. It was felt again as far away as Las Vegas. And depending on who you talk to and where they were, they experienced things very, very differently. In Ridgecrest, which is the epicenter, it's described as a violent shaking. And people are describing being terrified, people in tears. There was a fireball, which had been a home. Everybody did get out safely. That was confirmed by NBC News' Molly Hunter. And in places like Las Vegas where, uh, and, and Los Angeles, where you're seeing right now, it's being described more as like a seasickness, like a motion sickness, a, a feeling of vertigo. And people didn't feel necessarily panicked there, but it was, has definitely been a series of episodes. Fill it in a few different times just to kind of get it a real deep color. And then kind of go in here at the bottom. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 9 verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the times diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and upwards of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of these things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world hath the beginning and an end, and the an end is manifest. Brock the Yahweh, Brock the Yahweh Shai, Brock the Yahweh, Brock the Yahweh Shai, Brock the Yahweh, Brock the Yahweh Shai, Brock the Yahweh, Brock the Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Rakal Gadash Barak to the sincere Akim out there that's preaching his word of sincerity and the truth and double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone taught us the truth and as you can see the clip that started off this video showing you that judgment could come at any given time any given place and any given moment at anywhere at any time the Most High can bring swift judgment upon you and that's why we must have this word in us, because the judgment is coming. You saw that eat my bitch, that dildo headed bitch, doing a makeup tutorial, and out of nowhere the judgment of the Lord came. The houses were shaking, her room was breaking apart, which that was one of the earthquakes that took place down in Southern California. Guess what? The Bay Area is long overdue for the big one. And these are the prophecies that the Most High said were going to come to pass before his return on the earth. 2nd Ezra chapter 9 verse 1 He answered me then saying Measure thou the time diligently in itself Meaning the Most High gave us signs to look for When you read Matthew the 24th chapter Yahweh Shai gave us a list of things that are going to take place before his return So you measure the times diligently in itself By searching the scriptures And linking up the scriptures With what's going on in the world 
Measure thou the times diligently in itself, watching for the signs, watching for the prophecies to be fulfilled. It says, and when thou shalt see part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before. So we're seeing the signs pass, which the Most High told us before. Earthquakes in diverse places. That's a major prophecy that's taking place. It says, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So the highest is going to visit this world which he made. Yahweh Shai is on his way back. The second coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai is coming back on the earth to bring righteousness to this world. And that's why we're seeing the different signs on the earth because that's an indication that his return is very near. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people, earthquakes, we're seeing earthquakes throughout the four corners of the earth, uproars of the people, riots throughout the four corners of the earth, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Because the scriptures say the Most High declaring the end from the beginning that all things may be fulfilled. So the Most High set this whole story up before the earth was created, that these are the signs that are going to take place before his sons return. Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 5. For like as all that is made in the world hath the beginning and an end, and an end is manifest. To everything there's a time and a season. The Heavenly Father created a beginning and he created an end. And this is the end of Esau's rulership on the earth. Second Ezra chapter 6. Verse 8, And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, When Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Esau is the forefather of you so-called white people, you red Hebrew Edomites. Jacob is the forefather of you Israelites, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. So the end of Esau's world is the beginning of our world. So back in 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 5, For like as all that is made in the world at the beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. So now we're manifesting the downfall of Esau. It's being made manifest before the world. That's why we're seeing the signs, the earthquakes, the uproars of the people. These are the signs from the Heavenly Father that the so-called white man is losing his power. He's getting ready to be taken out. 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 6, even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and ending in effects and signs. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed. And we know that faith is a gift from the Most High, pursuing the Ephesians, the second chapter. So the Lord said, And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works. And by faith whereby ye have believed. Because the scriptures say, give diligence to make thy calling and election sure. So if we believe, we're going to do the works that are required of us. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works. And by faith whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils. And shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning which is talking about the elect that were predestinated to receive salvation because it's all about election. It's all about the Heavenly Father's elect, His chosen. So we're seeing the signs of these earthquakes, which is letting us know that Yahweh Shah's return is very close. Isaiah chapter 29, verse six, thou shall be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and great noise with storm and tempest and flame of devouring fire. So these are different various ways that the Heavenly Father visits you on the earth. It says, Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder. When you hear thunderstorms, that's the Lord. With earthquake, when you see earthquakes, when you feel earthquakes, that's from the Lord. And great noise and storm and tempest, tornadoes, hurricanes, that's of the Lord. And flame of devouring fire. Wildfires, that's of the Lord. That's how the Heavenly Father visits you for your wickedness. It's called judgment. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. What's the talk in the media today? 
the war with Iran, the war with America and Iran, the war with North Korea, the war with China. These things are rumors of wars that must come to pass, but it says the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. There's going to be a lack of food and pestilence. There's going to be diseases out here and earthquakes in diverse places. We're going to have earthquakes in diverse places, and that's what we're seeing. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So this is the very beginning of the sorrows that the Most High is going to bring on this earth because the earth is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Esau, the so-called white man, is the wicked. And his vibration is spread throughout the four corners of the earth. And the Heavenly Father is going to bring a swift judgment to these people on the earth. The wicked, which is death, destruction, disease, famine, earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, his son coming back with their innumerable amount of angels, the chariots, Leviathan coming out the ocean. The Most High is going to bring the worst destruction known to the history of the earth to the land of America and throughout the four corners of the earth. He's going to make an example of this wicked man's kingdom, Esau. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. But of the times and the season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So we know that the day of the Lord is coming as a thief in the night, meaning it's unexpected. Just like you've seen the clip that started off this video, that eating my bitch was doing a makeup tutorial and out of nowhere, judgment came like a thief in the night. The earth started shaking and that bitch was terrified. Just like that, the Lord can bring swift judgment and that's how it's gonna come to you people that's not on your watch. But us, we are upon our watch, pursuing the Habakkuk, the second chapter. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse one. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So we know that the return of Yahweh Shah is going to come as a thief to these people because they're not watching. But we are watching. So we don't take these things lightly when we see hurricanes, when we see earthquakes, when we see pestilence. We know that these are the signs the Most High said were going to take place before his son returns. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3. For when they shall say, peace and safety... Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Just like a woman that's about to give birth, when that baby is ready to come out, she can't turn that baby back around. Her water breaks, she goes through contractions, and eventually the baby is to be born. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3, for when they shall say peace and safety, you're looking at life like everything is going to be all right. Then sudden destruction come with upon them. So sudden destruction is going to come on you swiftly, quick, as a thief in the night, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day shall overtake you as a thief. So we're watching. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. So we're not of the night. The Heavenly Father's light, His glorious light, is shining upon us. We have the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of our Lord and our power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has given us his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, his truth. Our minds have been open to this truth, so we're not in darkness. But the people that have not been open to the truth, they're in utter darkness. They're walking in the valley of the shadow of death. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that the day shall overtake you as a thief. Ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. So watch and be sober, meaning be clear-headed. Watch for the prophecies. Watch for the signs that the Most High said were going to come on the earth. Read the scriptures. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 7. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night, the people that are in gross darkness. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, 
and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. What Ephesians the sixth chapter put on the whole armor of the Most High that ye may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil, that we may be able to endure during the hour of temptation, that we may be able to endure during the time of Jacob's trouble, when the Most High brings forth his judgments on the earth. We're going to have a hedge and a protection around us. Isaiah 33 and 6 and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time, the strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. This wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is what's going to keep our minds stable when all hell is breaking loose, when people are bugging out. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 9. But the Most High have not appointed us to wrath, which is talking about the elect. The Most High have not appointed the elect to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord, Yahusha Mashiach, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even also as ye do. And that's why we do these video epistles. That's why we go out to the highways and the byways to comfort one another and edify one another to build each other up for this great day. Because Yahweh Shah's return is going to take place. It's written and it will happen. Revelation chapter 3, verse 3. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So you are to be on your watch, watching for the signs, watching for the prophecies, because Yahweh Shah's return is nigh at hand. The day of the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night. So judgment can come swift, quickly, just like that. You could be on your way, doing your everyday routine, and out of nowhere, judgment can come. Just like you seen that Edomite bitch, the stupid dildo-headed bitch doing her makeup tutorial, and out of nowhere, judgment came on that bitch. Even though the house could have crumbled and killed the bitch, but the Heavenly Father had to record that for an example. So you can see it and know that any time, the judgment could come. And it's not just a random earthquake. These earthquakes come directly from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh was shot. He gives the angels the order to come down on the earth and to do what they do, shake the earth, bring tornadoes, bring death, bring destruction. The scriptures say, the Lord, he is the power that kills and makes alive. He wounds, he heals. The Lord does all these things. So we are to fear Yahweh Bashim al because we know his judgments are coming on the earth. So with that, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Rakakudash Shalom.